What's going on guys, Patrick here. And in this video, actually over the next couple of videos, I'm gonna be talking about the normal distribution, how to use it, and I'm gonna be referring to different tools. So I'm gonna to refer to a Z table for a lot of the questions, and I'll leave a link in the description box to a Z table that you could print out, download it as a reference. I'm also gonna be referring to a stats calculator. So this is the Casio FX9750G2. So if you could see that, probably not zoomed in or focused there, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna be referring to this as well. So a bunch of different tools I'll be using to solve the next couple of questions. I'll also leave a link to this in the description box. Now, a normal distribution can also be called a Gaussian distribution or a Z distribution. And you've probably already seen it, whether in class or in your textbook, basically takes this kind of shape here, right? So it's like a symmetrical kind of bell curve there. And um, this normal distribution, it has a mean of zero, right? So that means zero is right in the middle of it. And it also has a standard deviation of one. Now this, we're not gonna really be talking about too much in this video. In this video, I'm gonna focus more specifically on symmetry, on the symmetry of this distribution over here. So I'll talk about the standard deviation in a future video. Now, one thing I wanna mention is the format and sort of the terms used to describe this uh, distribution. So you have zero over here, and then to the right of zero are gonna be all the positive numbers. So you'll have like one, you'll have two, et cetera, et cetera. And then here you'll have negative one, negative two, and then you could have numbers in between. So you could have like 0 0.5 or 0 0.2 or 1.2, 1.3 or even 1.35, right? So all the negative numbers to the left of zero, all the positive numbers to the right of zero. And all of these numbers listed over here, they're called the Z scores. Right? So whenever they, uh, whenever they, you see them talking about a Z score in your textbook, they're talking about these numbers here on the bottom, sort of on the axis. And then all of this area over here, we could call it the area but it's also the probability. All right, so the area or the probability. Now, if we describe the probability as decimals, we know the total probability, 100%, is equal to one. So the total area under this curve here, right, if we were to fill everything in, it's gonna equal one, that's the total area of everything. Now, as I said, this distribution over here is perfectly symmetrical with zero being right in the middle. So if I draw this again, right, with all of this stuff going on around here, let's say I just draw zero right in the middle. What if I wanna find the probability that the Z score is less than zero. So now we're getting into specific formats of questions that you're gonna see. When they ask you for this, they're just asking what's the area to the left of zero. So basically, all of the Z values that are less than zero, what is this probability over here? What's that area gonna be, right? Area probability in this case, same thing. Well. As I mentioned, the total area under the curve is one, right? If we filled everything in, it's equal to one. And if zero is right in the middle, then that means the area to the left of zero, it's gonna be equal to what? 0 0.5, half of one, right? Total area is one, so then half of that area is gonna be 0 0.5. So the probability that Z is less than zero is equal to 0 0.5. That's sort of like the easiest way to describe probability because to get this, you don't really need to use a table. You don't really need to use a calculator. You could just see it from the uh, graph, from the distribution, knowing that zero is in the middle and the total area is one. Now, as I mentioned, I'm gonna be talking a lot about symmetry. So notice that the probability of Z being less than zero it's also equal to the probability or the area under the curve that Z is greater than zero, right? The probability when Z is greater than zero is all of this right there, 
right? So excluding that. And notice that both of them are equal because it's perfectly symmetrical. So the probability that z is greater than zero is, all, is also equal to 0. 0.5. Now what if I give you something a little bit more specific to work with, like the probability that z is greater than 1.2? So if we draw this out, show this visually, which I highly recommend you actually doing, especially at the beginning when you're getting these types of questions, draw it out just so you could see it and you get more comfortable seeing it visually, seeing how it works. So probability that z is greater than 1.2. Now where is 1.2 gonna be relative to zero? It's gonna be to the right of zero. So that's gonna be like over here. And they want the probability or the area under the curve when z is greater than 1.2. That's what that means right there. So they're looking for this area over here. Now to get that actual area, you're going to need to use the Z table or the calculator. And I'm actually not going to go over that in this video. I'm going to go over that in the future video, in the next video. But what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to try to create equivalent expressions to this over here, to this area, using this distribution and using symmetry. As I said, I want to focus on symmetry in this video more because it's super important, you're gonna be using it throughout the course. So the probability that Z is greater than 1.2, how else can we write that? Well, if we know that this is perfectly symmetrical, zero's in the middle, then we know the distance from zero to 1.2 is the same as the distance from zero to negative 1.2, like that. And so this area, if you notice, it's gonna be exactly the same as this area right here. So probably that Z is greater than 1.2, I can actually write that as well as the probability that Z is less than negative 1.2, right? Does that make sense? This area over here is exactly the same as this area, but this area is the probability that Z is less than negative 1.2, right? So both of these, are the same thing. They're going to give you the same area. They're the exact same expression. So what is another expression that we can represent the probability that Z is greater than 1.2, knowing that this is fully symmetrical? Well, let's write 1.2 over here. And notice that what we can do is we can maybe take the total area, right? So all of this, now, what's the total area under the curve? As I mentioned, it's one. And because we're just looking for this specific area over here, what I can do is I could subtract all of this area. Right, so I'm taking the full area, which is one, and I'm just subtracting this area right here to end up with the area that we're looking for. So notice that I subtracted all of the area that's less than 1.2. So this is like one minus the probability that Z is less than 1.2. Okay, does that make sense? So I filled everything in, that was one, and then I subtracted, I took away this area to the left of 1.2, which I wrote right there. One minus the probability that Z is less than 1.2. What's another potential way to write this? Well, if I draw this again, We know, we got zero here, we got 1.2 over here. We know that this area is equal to this area over here, right? As I mentioned up there. So what we can do is we could fill out the total area here, again, which is equal to one, and then we could subtract all of this area over here, right? So all of the area, to the right of negative 1.2. That would leave us with this area, which is the same as this area, which is what we were starting with. All right, so we could rewrite this as well as Z is being greater than negative 1.2. Right, this here represents all of this area that I just subtracted. And we're left with this area, which is equivalent to this area over here. All right, so when you have a perfectly symmetrical distribution like this, you create multiple expressions, right? So all of these, if you were to input all of these in like a stats calculator or use the table, as I'm gonna show you in future videos, 
all of these would give you the exact same area or exact same probability. Let's do another one. Let's find some equivalent expressions to the probability that z is less than 0 0.5. So if I draw that out, got 0 in the middle, 0 0.5, that's positive, that's to the right of 0, so that's going to be here. And the probability that z is less than 0.5, that's basically all of this here. All of that area that's to the left of 0 0.5, less than 0 0.5. So what are some equivalent expressions that we can create that will equal that area right there? Well, we got 0, we got 0 0.5, so we know negative 0.5 it's going to be the same distance from 0 as 0.5 is. So notice that all of this area over here to the left of 0 0.5, that's going to be exactly the same as all of this area to the right of negative 0.5. Because both of these are perfectly symmetrical, so all of this is also equal to all of that. Right, the probability, uh, the probability that z is greater than negative 0 0.5. Both of these areas are the exact same. So those are two equivalent expressions. It's another way to write it. What if we were to fill out that total area again? So we got 0 0.5 over here. So if we fill out the total area, so all of this, that's equal to 1, right? What do we have to subtract from this total area to get this area filled in? We would subtract all of this area right there, right? We would subtract all of the area to the right of 0 0.5. So we would subtract the probability that z is greater than 0 0.5. And that's going to give us the same probability that z is less than 0.5, right? 1, everything filled in, minus this area right here will leave us with the area to the left of 0 0.5, right? So you could just keep playing around like this and getting multiple expressions. And why this is important to do is because sometimes the way you're going to be using the z-table, you're going to have to create equivalent expressions in order to use the z-table properly. So that's where I am going with this eventually. Let's do one last one. Let's do the probability that z is between negative 1 and 1.2. So notice z is greater than negative 1, but it's less than 1.2. So if we take that and draw it, we got 0 in the middle, 1.2, that's positive 1.2 there, and then we got negative 1, right? That's going to be to the left of 0. What they're asking for here is basically this area, right, in between negative 1 and 1.2. So how can we create some equivalent expressions to this over here? Well, how about we take the total area, so imagine this was all filled in, and all we would subtract is this area here that's not filled in, and then this area here that's not filled in. So we could subtract the probability that z is less than negative 1, which is going to be this area that we are subtracting from 1 if it was all filled in, minus this area here, the probability that z is greater than positive 1.2. Right? Both of these are going to give us the exact same thing. It's another way to write it. Well, what we can do common way to write this, got 1.2, we got negative 1, is we could fill in all of the area to the left of 1.2. So if we fill all of this in over here, like that, so it doesn't just stop at negative 1 like it does here, right? It goes all the way to the left. We could take that total area and then subtract this area over here to end up with the area between negative 1 and 1.2, right? So we would take the probability that z is less than 1.2, which is going to be all of this right there, and then we could subtract this area over here, right? So the probability, 
or the area to the left of a z-square of negative 1. Right, so that's another way to write. And there's actually multiple ways to write it. We could do this on the right side as well, right? So my point is in this video is that you could take expressions like this and using zero as the middle and the symmetry of this distribution, you can write equivalent expressions, right? That are gonna give you the exact same probability or the exact same area under the distribution. Now, what I'm gonna do in the next video is I'm going to go over how do we actually find something like that, a probability that z is less than 1.23. So if I draw that, how do we actually find it? Not get an equivalent expression, but how do we get that actual number of all of this area over here? Because we know to the left of 0, as I mentioned before, it's 0 0.5, but that's easy to see because the total is 1 and then zero's right in the middle. But how do we get this area over here to the left of 1.23 or to the left or to the right of any number? And that's what I'm gonna go over in the next video.